told you I'd take you on some of these rides and I got to do them, uh, some mobile installs. Today I'm heading over to a customer's house to do a 1987 Toyota pickup. You should see this thing, it's really cool. I'll make sure I get it on video. It's an actual, it looks like just a regular old 87 truck on the front, but then you look at the back and it's got dualies and a carrying case of some kind on the back to haul stuff. Um, I went and saw it yesterday to make sure he had all the parts and the radio and everything and uh, it all looks good now I just got to do the install. So here we go, let's go do this. Alright, we're just heading over there right now. I'm not going to record the whole trip because that would be pretty boring. But uh, we're heading over there and uh, show you how I do an install. I don't know if any of you guys know, I'm actually in Calais, Maine. Very small town. I'm actually on the main street in downtown. And there is nothing here. I like it here. I got a lot of friends here, a lot of good people. But there is just nothing here. Actually, and if you look over there, across the way, there's a river right there. That's Canada. New Brunswick, St. Stephen's area. So anytime I usually want to go do something, usually end up over in Canada. I got a little more of a selection than uh, we do here in Calais, Maine. That's it. That's downtown. Now we're heading into the rural where everybody lives. A couple of garages. Here's the 1987 Toyota that I'm working on today. Let's get this. This is definitely a working man's truck for sure. What I love about it is the dually's on the back. And he told me this thing gets better traction in the snow than his four wheel drive. So that's pretty cool. He said this thing's been completely restored. And I saw under the hood yesterday, I didn't see any dirt whatsoever. This thing looks brand new. Even the interior is super clean. The only reason we're even doing the radio is because the display on that one doesn't work. And he wants to have options for uh, auxiliary if need be. So we're gonna go ahead and do the radio in this. Shouldn't take too long. And. Uh, Show you how to do it. First thing we're gonna do is get this dash to round off so we can get to the radio screws. You also have to take out all the screws. That helps a lot too. Next step is to get the radio out. Four screws, four Phillips head screws holding that in. the antenna and then two plugs that's the radio we're gonna be using these brackets this is what we're gonna bolt to our new radio to put back in and then that factory pocket can stay in place and it'll, everything will look just like it should and um, I'm gonna go disassemble this and wire up the harness 
What I'm going to show you now is how to take the brackets off of here and put it onto our new radio. We're not going to need this cage to mount it in the dash because we're using the factory brackets. So this cage can just be put away. Don't need it. We're also not going to need this trim ring that goes around the faceplate. Because what's going to happen is when it's these are bolted to this one, it's going to countersink in and it's going to be it's going to fit just like the factory radio. You can see they're the same size. And I'll sit the only thing that's possibly going to stick out is a knob, but that's not going to hurt anything. So that can go in the box also, don't need that. Now, I'm gonna give the customer back his radio just in case he wants to keep it. And uh, even though it doesn't really work, I always give the product back to the customer. These have R and L on them, so you'll, you'll get them on the right side. Don't worry about that. All right, these radios usually come with an, some extra screws. I don't like using these. Um, the screws that usually come with the radio are the correct depth, so you don't go too deep into the unit, because sometimes there's boards and uh, chips that can be hit. Uh, the ones that I don't use, I save, so luckily I have some. I'm going to go grab this. All right, I'm going to try these out. only need two per side. We got the fine threads, which is what it looks like inside of there. All right, there you have it. Dash kit, quote unquote. Factory brackets is all you need for this truck, 87 Toyota. So that's done, I'm gonna set that aside. All right, now I'm gonna wire up the harness. Uh, I think I have everything I need. The harness that came with the radio, the new radio, a Metra um, for a 1987 and up 70-1761 part number for the Toyota. Soldering irons, solder, heat shrink, zip ties, uh, crimpers. We're actually not going to use this harness because they don't have rear speakers. Uh, that's what the green and the purple is. The green is your left rear and your purple is your right rear. I'm just going to put it in a stereo box. Uh, we're not going to need it, but I'm going to let, let the customer have it. Alright, first thing we're going to do is make all these wires the same length. I'm pulling out the remote steering wheel control, the mute, because they already have heat shrink on them and I'm not going to use them, so I'm going to waste my heat shrink. Okay, I'm just going to snip this into the trash. Okay, now they're all the same size, now I'm going to strip them off. First thing I need to do is get some heat shrink ready. Now I'm going to slide it on each. Next, I'm going to put these together and do the X method. So 
So this blue wire here is either used as a power antenna or a remote turn on. I don't need for either one, so I'm just going to clip it at the top. You don't have to clip it all the way down here. Leave space, you may need it another time. So always leave your wires long and just tie them up when you're done. Same with these four back here. These are the rear speakers, like I mentioned before. I'm not going to use them, right? So I'm just going to cut the tips off. And then I'm going to cover them with solder, iron, or so, excuse me. I'm going to cover them with the heat shrink so that none of those wires can be touched, causing the radio to have a problem. Now I'm going to solder everything. Sometimes you get a little, I mean, I did because I didn't take my time and wrap it properly, but a little wire that sticks up, you just gently press it down so that I can get my heat shrink over it. Because you don't want the heat shrink to be torn, otherwise what's the point of putting the heat shrink on it? And especially on the main constant wire, that's going to be hot all the time. size heat shrink. I'm just going to cut them off and kind of do it with this right here. That way nothing can touch this copper inside the uh, wire housing and cause a short. Okay, everything's soldered, everything's covered up. And I'm just going to use zip ties. I see a lot of people using that new tape, and I like it, just haven't gotten myself any yet. So I'm just going to use zip ties on this to keep it nice and neat behind the radio. two plugs here but like I said you don't need this one there's no power antenna so we're not even going to use it we're just going to keep it tucked in the back plug this one in plug that into the radio you have to plug in your antenna okay, just make sure it's all nice and neat You gotta have the wires just right. There's a plug on here now, so it's adding a little bit more. And you gotta make sure it's in there correctly or the radio won't sit flat. And there we go now. Take the same screws I used, take the radio out, and put it back in. Before I go putting the dash back on, even though it's only two plugs, I'm going to turn the truck on and make 
make sure everything works. So far so good, it's lighting up. So I'm going to plug back in my cigarette lighter and the overdrive light and put the dash back on. screws back in. I'm letting you guys get a whole view of everything I'm doing here to show you some of the things that you might come across. And on, in this case, I'm taking this back off because the side screws here have to screw into this clip, which fell off. So, just take this back off real quick, nice and easy. This just slides right back into here. Double check the other side, make sure it's there. It is. And we'll get back to what we're doing. Okay, they like to pop off too, so you gotta be gotta be careful. And take your time with it. usually slide off. ashtray slide. Without that, the ashtray will not work. Blow the battery. 
battery make it? That's the question. It did. Oh. Yeah, straight back in. Make sure it works good. And we'll test the radio one more time. I like to do that when I get done putting things back together to make sure everything's still good. There you go, installed. Not a very hard car, Could probably take 20 minutes if you weren't trying to make a video doing it. Hope you guys learned something from this. Remember, always solder. And we'll see you on the next one. All right guys, there you go. It's really nothing to it. Uh, 1987 Toyota for a radio installation. Remember, always solder your connections. Very important. The crimp caps are good, but they're not great. They can come off. Uh, soldering is not going to come off. You solder it and then heat shrink it. It's not coming apart. It's, free. it's not going to come apart until you cut it. So that's a it's a must when you're doing installs on stereos and amplifiers and especially remote starts. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. And uh, check out my Instagram, Facebook, and my Google Plus accounts, and uh, let me know what you think. Also, don't forget to check out my website right here www.rawcustomsmobileinstall.com and we'll see you guys on the next one.